Hi everybody, this is Lara with your weekly video for the S&P 500 for the week ending Friday 30th of September. We've got more downward movement, it's what we've been expecting. A third wave down at minor degree could end about 3438 and my target for primary two is still 3144. Elliott wave analysis first, classic analysis last and this bear market is invalidating alternate wave counts. Since back here I've been expecting more downward movement, we're getting it. Intermediate C should subdivide as a five wave structure, one, two, threes move through its middle, we need to see the end of three and then a bounce for four and then five. The bigger picture here sees a cycle degree fifth wave beginning here in March 2020. It may be extended, cycle one was not extended, cycle three was extended and so cycle five may also be extended. Within cycle five I expect primary one is over here, primary two continuing lower as a zigzag. Subdividing 535 to be labelled intermediate A, B, C. The target for primary 2 is where intermediate C would reach equality in length with A, that target is at 3144. When I have the end of minor waves 3 and 4, then I can add to the target calculation at minor degree, at that stage it may widen to a small zone or it may change. Primary 2 may not move beyond the start of 1, below 2191.86. When primary 2 is over we'll be looking for a V bottom and evidence of sellers capitulating. I'll be looking for an 80% uh, two, 80, two back to back 80% down days or a 90% down day followed very quickly after by two back to back 80% up days or a 90% up day to support a V bottom and if we see that I'll expect primary 2 could be over and then a primary degree third wave could be in its really early stages. That could be coming up sooner rather than later now. Let's take a look at the daily chart where this high for intermediate B which was a zigzag is this point up here. Intermediate C subdividing as an impulse with minor 1 over here as an impulse, minor 2 an expanded flat, minor 3 continuing lower as an impulse, that's the only structure it may be. Within minor 3 minute 1 over here, minute 2 a flat, minute 3, minute 4 a zigzag, nice alternation here, minute waves 1 and 3 are really close to equality in length with minute 3 just a little bit longer and so there's already a Fibonacci ratio between 1 and 3 within this impulse so I won't be expecting to see a ratio for 5 because it's pretty common for the S&P to exhibit a Fibonacci ratio between 2 of its actionary waves and less, quite a lot less common for it to exhibit a ratio between all 3. So what that means is the target remains the same. At 3438 minor wave 3 would reach 1.618 the length of minor 1. Draw a channel around this downward movement now from minor wave 1 to the last low, place a copy on the end of minor 2. As price keeps falling next week, keep redrawing that channel and when minor 3 may be over, that channel will then be drawn using Elliot's, sorry, Elliot's first technique. And the upper edge may show where minor 4 may find resistance, although it could end midway within the channel. I'll be looking out for minor 4 to most likely be a zigzag but it could also be a combination or a triangle. It may not move into wave 1 price territory above 3903.71 but it'll probably end within the fourth wave of one lesser degree somewhere within this short little price range down here. The target for primary 2 the same 3144 and here's that bigger channel from the weekly chart here's the lower edge on the daily chart. We'll look out for support for minor wave 5 there although we could also see an overshoot. The fifth wave to end intermediate C could exhibit some strength to the downside as we see a sharp V bottom form. I'll be looking out for that in another maybe two or three weeks coming up soon. Classic analysis now, I don't have an alternate for you this week, they just keep getting invalidated by this bear market and this, these charts, the classic analysis charts are just quite bearish. On a closing basis as well as new lows, we're seeing new lows in this bear market and volume is pushing price lower. This weekly candlestick price is closing very close to lows and it's got a bearish upper wick that tells us it's most likely we're going to see at least for the start of next week more downward movement. 
I've zoomed out and had a look at where the next support may be. The round number pivot of 3,500 may be the next area for a possible bounce. Prices just slice through 3,600. On balance volume gives us a weak bearish signal, supports a bearish Elliott wave count. ADX says there's a downward trend, it's not yet extreme, and RSI and money flow aren't oversold. Stochastics is entering oversold, but this one's usually the first to get there. Let's wait for RSI to get closer to oversold, if not in there, before we consider there's a danger territory here for the bear market. It's getting close though, it's getting close, but the trend is obviously down. ATR increasing as price falls, normal behaviour. At the daily chart level, Friday session, bearish upper wick, close very near to the lows, push from volume, pushing price lower. There's been multiple 80 and 90% down days here, 80% up day here, and a 90% up day here, quickly followed by a 90% down day, indicating a 180 degree shift from bull to bear for the short term. Another 90% down day here, another 80% down day here, and Thursday another 80% down day with a couple of 80% up days and well, three 80% up days here. So this is really normal to see during a bear market, this extreme volatility. This tells us it's really likely that the bear market is still continuing. The sellers haven't capitulated yet. And there's no evidence of returning demand from buyers either. According to Lowry's data, they're very bearish. On balance volume has no new range, it's making new lows with price. ADX at both time frames indicate there's a downward trend at neither time frame, that trend is not extreme. RSI is again oversold, but this can get more deeply oversold at the daily chart level, bounce back up into neutral while we see price have a consolidation and then move back down and exhibit some bullish divergence before at this time frame it starts to move into danger territory. Starting to set up for that look, not there yet. Money flow index also just reaching oversold, stochastics oversold, ATR increasing as price moves lower, absolutely normal to be expected behaviour for this market. At the weekly chart level, both price and the AD line made new uh, the AD line made new lows last week. Price didn't on a closing basis. That's been resolved. Price has made new lows on a closing basis, as has the AD line made new lows. That bearish divergence is now resolved. At the daily chart level, no new short-term divergence. Both price and the AD line moving lower. I just checked with the horizontal trend line here. This is slightly below this point, so there's no bullish divergence. It's pretty weak though, just a tiny little touch of breadth not falling quite as fast as price, but there's no divergence. There's this really long-term bearish divergence between price and the NASDAQ AD line. I've been over this every week. It doesn't mean that price has to make new lows below, this is March 2009. So this is over 10 years of bearish divergence. This is a monthly chart. Um, it's, it's been in place for many years way back here in 2016, and yet price went on a big bull run. So when this agrees with some long-term divergence between price and the NYSE All Issues AD line, whether it be between highs and lows, once we have that longer-term divergence in both of these AD lines, then my analysis will get really bearish. Too early to do that yet. But I am noting every week that it's there. On the weekly chart, the NASDAQ AD lines made a new short to mid-term low. As has price, the short-term divergence is now resolved. There's still that longer-term divergence between the March 2020 low and the NASDAQ AD line. Price hasn't made a new low below March 2020, but the NASDAQ AD line has strongly made new lows below that point. Now again, that doesn't mean that price has to do that, because I'm seeing some bullishness in VIX and the NYSE All Issues AD line isn't as bearish as this. When they agree then yes, I'd expect price to follow. I think this one will probably develop further as the bull market continues. Between price and inverted VIX as a measure of volatility, price has made new lows below this prior point back here, but inverted VIX has not. So there's some bullishness. As price falls, it doesn't come with a normal increase in volatility to the same degree that it normally would. 
And so this is a little bit odd for inverted VIX to behave like this. And I think this may be an indication that the end of the bear market could be coming up a little bit sooner rather than later. Maybe in the next couple of weeks, this certainly could develop a little bit further. Or inverted VIX could make new lows as price continues to fall and that short to midterm bullish or short term bullish divergence could just disappear and then I'd consider it resolved. VIX and VVIX. VIX has made a new short term high, VVIX has not. Volatility of VIX slightly depressed is bullish for price for the short term. At the daily chart level, something odd here from inverted VIX. On Friday, price has fallen quite strongly with strong push from volume, but inverted VIX has moved slightly higher. This downward movement on Friday did not come with a normal increase in volatility. Volatility has slightly declined. This is bullish for the very short term for price. It could be an early warning sign of minor three coming to an end. And we've seen this before, and yet price just keeps going on lower. These little yellow Arrows are single day instances of bullish divergence between price and inverted VIX and they didn't really lead to anything at all. They were followed by more downward movement so I'm not going to give this one much weight. Both VIX and VVIX moved a little lower on Friday, no new short term divergence between them. That's all from me with your S&P analysis this week and just to let you all know what's up, what I'm doing for the next two or three weeks, we're on a massive road trip from Bogota, Colombia, down through Colombia, down into Ecuador. I'll be taking it a little bit slow, making sure I have a good internet connection along the way, but the only thing for you that it means is I may not have a lot of time to do extra free stuff for you. But if anyone really wants some extra analysis of an extra market, let me know in the comments and I will make every endeavour to get that to you and I'll always put you at the top of the list. So thank you so much for your patience. Once I'm in Ecuador, I'll be there a couple of months or so, quite settled, lots of free stuff coming up for you and two new online courses I've been working on. Thank you so much, everybody. I hope you all have an awesome weekend.